All right, hello, welcome. My name is Jason Welsh, and welcome to my horribly advanced 3D printing, electroforming, and electroplating composition video series. Wow. Okay, so this is not something that you're ever going to take to a party, and you're never going to make any kind of friends whatsoever when you start talking about this stuff. That's for sure. This video series is probably for the 1% of the population that electroform and electroplate on planet Earth. It has no bearing on anybody that's never electroformed and electroplated. So it's a very tailored audience that I'm doing this for. Um, that's okay. Uh, I'm, I can't gather everybody at once. So um, I'm going to start making a couple of the more advanced things now. So what have been, what's happened behind the scenes is where I disappeared to is I've been doing a lot of photogrammetry stuff. I've been learning a lot of photogrammetry and I've been learning a lot of 3D modeling. I already had 25 years of 3D modeling under my belt, but then um, some technology came along and kind of made it so that I had to learn a lot more because the level of detail has gotten so good um, that I have to get that much level of detail out to 3D print. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is look at these. Okay, these are little bits and barbels that you can print with a 3D printer. So let me explain how good 3D printing has gotten. Um, it can be all the way down to 0.3 of a millimeter. What does that mean? Well, you can print almost as thin as a sheet of paper right now in resin. So if you are into electroforming and electroplating, you can have uh, internal plastic in your pieces and plate over the top of them as solid copper and the thing in the center is so thin and so small that it doesn't even matter anymore that it's plastic okay I'll give you some examples the other thing is photogrammetry okay photogrammetry has gotten so good that you can pretty much scan any object in the real world and then shrink it down to any size that you need it. So here, for example, these twigs on the side were actually real trees. Okay. And then I scanned them using a computer and then I shrunk them down with all the detail and now I can use those real sticks in my composition work on necklaces. This was a real thorn tr um, vine, okay, from roses. Okay, I took it off. I scanned the entire strand of thorny branch, and then I was able to shrink it down, put bones in it in blender and then rotate it into a bale format uh, here is an acorn branch you can see there's little acorns here so cute <laughs> so this was an acorn branch I scanned the whole branch and then I put bones in it and then I then formed it into a bale then I can print it out and then I can plate it with copper and I can get it a lot thinner than this too. So here's little branches and little, all kinds of goofy stuff. Here's some things like that. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. So these are one, this is a one inch square right here. And look at the detail. The detail is unbelievable. And here is this little tiny antler thing. Okay. 
unbelievable. <laughs> so this is the state of where we're at in 3D print. We can make things super, super small and super, super thin so that uh, a skull, here's a skull from a cat, can be printed this small and still have unbelievable detail. And if you look at this, that little tiny thin bone right there is still very sturdy. All right, so that's where we're at in the world of 3D print. So now it's time to get excited. It was, it was time to get excited before all this. And I've been uh, behind the scenes just like a little kid in a candy store saying there is no limit. There is no limit. There is no limit. And uh, I've been scanning small things to make them big, like a parakeet skull. <laughs> or I can scan bugs now with all the detail. It's crazy. So let's look at what some composition pieces here. So here's my cabajon. The cabajon comes at a different size. The sizes are completely random. And what do I do? How do I like... Um, well, I could, here's my 3D printed piece. This is copper now, but my 3D printed piece got a lot thinner than this piece. And then I was able to put it into place and then plate over it like a 32nd of, or 16th of an inch of copper on the outside. You do lose a little bit of detail when you go to plate that thick, but the underlying structure is super... Um, adding to it's adding to that detail, and uh, depending on how you're plate, plating your objects and what kind of structure of copper that you're making, it, it, this stuff is so strong that you can almost sharpen it. It's it's crazy how um, tight the molecules can become when you are plating copper on an object. It's um, almost like there's no room for any other molecule to be put into place. It, it's such a tight knit structure of copper molecules. So this is some hardened copper, chemically hardened copper. And here's another one. So you can see that branch. I just printed it way smaller than this one. And boom. So what I'm going to show you, if one, you can get these tidbits, these little things. You can get these. Okay. And it comes, they come in a whole bunch of different little shapes and sizes and branches and skulls and everything else. You can get them on my website at firstdensitymaterial.com. You can print them in any size whatsoever that you need. You can put them big, small, boom, boom. And then you can use them in your electroforming compositions. But what I want to show you is you can also use them inside 3D land here. And then you can build compositions in 3D land and then print them off and then put them on your cabochons. Okay. That's another way to do it. So we're going to be utilizing these bits and showing you how to mirror them, how to join them, how to print them. I also have sticks and I'm going to be showing you how to like put bones in them and forming them around as a bale. Now, what about scale here? Well, let's say for example, I have A box. Okay, see this box? This box is in software. How big is that box? Is that box one inch? What is it? So we have to understand how these 3D shapes can be printed off, but in order to do that, we first understand like if they're in software, when they get 3D printed, how big are they? so that we can utilize them 
in composition work. So now I think it's easier to understand why I have to go into a lesson of scale and where the direction I'm trying to take you in. So I hope you enjoy and let's move on to the next video.